We recently saw the 30th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall. It was an incident that helped bring an end to the tyrannical communist regime in the Soviet Union. And today we have with us an expert who was there when it fell. It's Art Hartman. And he's a great guy. He was at Tiananmen Square, you know, reflecting on what took place, what he saw during the fall of the Berlin Wall. And he's going to tie together these different incidents and show us how what we saw happen then is still very much relevant today when it comes to Hong Kong, when it comes to this battle in the West between freedom and socialism. So everyone, please stick around. Please remember to like and subscribe. Get started now. Real pleasure having you on Crossroads. Thanks so much for having me on the show, and it's, it's always a pleasure. You guys are, uh, are great, one of my favorite uh, news out outlets. I oh, appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. And so you do some interesting work yourself. You're with the what is it, Coalition to Save Manned Space Exploration, and you also run a business selling parts of the Berlin Wall from your expedition there, which we're going to talk about. Indeed. I, uh, you know, on space, I've been working to try to restore our space program to what we, we remember, where, where we can actually do bold and exciting things, which means returning to the moon by 2024, which I advised the Trump campaign to do and the White House, and it's now official U.S. policy. Uh, but the Berlin Wall, that was a moment of emotion and, uh, you know, passion and honor to be there when it fell 30 years ago. Great. And so we just hit the 30th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall. And now we're seeing protests in Hong Kong and the Chinese Communist Party really looking at uh, what may be their, their equivalent of the Berlin Wall. You know, what, are you, what are your thoughts about what we're seeing unfold right now and the significance of it? It's so similar. If you look at, at uh, the Soviet Empire in uh, the mid-1980s, they were at the height of their power. Their ships, uh, naval ships, uh, rode the waves. They were running revolutionary movements all around the world. Uh, creating uh, dictatorships and uh, and and murder um, and uh, repression back home. Nobody thought they would collapse, and if it happened, it certainly wouldn't be bloodless. And we see the same thing here today. China just celebrated their what 70th anniversary of their uh, communist regime, uh, and uh, and the. Soviets had, uh, uh, you know, collapsed just before their 60th, I believe. Um, but things are very similar. In Hong Kong, we see the same kinds of elements that led up to the fall of the wall. And from a historical and even a psychological point of view, this is very important because the, the Hong Kongers they understand, and it's being driven home more and more, that their liberty is at stake. They've enjoyed it for forever, and they kind of, you know, were living with the fantasy that China would always leave them alone. But of course, that doesn't happen because China is scared to death of having free Chinese people when they're propaganda line is that democracy and freedom are incompatible with Chinese culture. Well, that's not true, obviously, in Hong Kong and the, and the beautiful, vibrant uh, democracy across the strait in Taiwan, where I visited uh, several years ago and witnessed. Uh, so the fall of the wall could happen in China, and it could be as sudden and as earth-shattering as, uh, as it was in, um, in the Soviet Empire. Now, I know you were with this expedition that went to the wall when it was falling, and you were one of the first people to see people on the other side, to see them see freedom for the first time. Tell us about how that started and kind of what that experience was. Well, literally, I was watching 
the news and I saw people dancing on the wall and somebody who's been in public policy all my life, you know, and a passionate sort of freedom fighter type of personality. Uh, I even visited the wall in high school when it was in its full operation and and saw the armed guards with uh, live bullets uh, ready to shoot anybody that would dare cross illegally. And I saw the contrast between, a, uh, you know, the bold, dynamic uh, West Berlin with their Kudam shopping street that was like Times Square and cross Checkpoint Charlie. And all of a sudden it's like gray and drab and dreary and everyone's wearing gray clothes and there's no sidewalk cafes. It's just dreary because everybody's scared to death. You know, you, you get 10 people chatting together on the street in, Ber in West Berlin and it's life is normal and they're chatting and joking. You get 10 people on the street in uh, East Berlin or China today and somebody's going to take a look and somebody might not like what they say and uh, the price for that could be fatal. So seeing the people dancing on the wall, it, it inspired me. It's like, I want to be there. Wait a minute. Why not? So I grabbed three friends and we took off for Berlin. And um, I had another idea, which was, hey, maybe if I bring some wall back, I can sell it and uh, have some fun. So and it's very so, wonderfully ironic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Communists built it, capitalists tore it down. Yeah, and sold it. Uh, I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the ultimate uh, you know, yeah. retribution. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Go ahead, though. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. So me and my friends, we flew over to Berlin. We... Um, went to the wall and that was a remarkable moment because I remembered how it was in high school where you had, uh, you know, to be around the wall was almost a scary thing. But before we even saw the wall, we heard this tapping sound. It was this rhythmic musical sound and then we rounded a corner and there's the wall in front of us uh, near Potsdamer Platz. And there's all these people standing at the wall and lounging around, talking, smiling. They were smiling. And the rhythmic tapping sound, there was musical. It was hammers on chisels as East German youth were sitting there they were raised on Marxism, right? But they knew what to do instinctively. It's human nature. They were smashing at the wall, getting little pieces that they then sold to Western terrorists for real money so that they could buy the things that they had always dreamed about. Fresh fruit, almost impossible to get in East Germany. Uh, Western jeans, Western music, even Western cigarettes. Those were, you know, the prized possessions. Uh, and so those kids... Instantly, they had realized what to do. And it, it was just a wonderful moment in, in human history. And then later we, we got to chatting with many of them. A, uh, a youth of maybe 20 who had been in prison. Why? Because he had tried to escape. He was one of the lucky ones because the more typical punishment if you're caught trying to escape is merely a bullet in the brain. Uh, and so if the wall hadn't come down, he probably would have been, uh, in jail today. Uh, we met, and if you go to, uh, to my website for the Berlin wall, berlin-wall.net, berlin-wall.net, then you'll see pictures of the, of our expedition. You'll see pictures of East Germans. Um, you'll see, uh, and of course, pieces of the wall, uh, which makes a great Christmas gift. But uh, um, East German border guards, their job was to kill people. And yet we met some that had the most delightful smiles on their faces. Why? Well, for the first time in their life, they didn't have to go to work 
expecting that they might have to kill somebody that day. So you'll see a couple of pictures on berlin-wall.net of East German border guards. One is, uh, you know, talking to a little child. Another one is uh, is posing for a photo with one of my expedition uh, friends. And that, you know, the return to humanity, that that's so important. Kind of like after World War II when, uh, you know, the Nazis had to return to civilian life. And of course, those that that did crimes were prosecuted in Nuremberg and other play, other ways. Uh, but uh, but to see the redemption in the face of those guards, that that was lovely. Hmm. What, what, what lesson do you think people can take from the fall of the wall? I'm, I'm curious, you know, being there. That tyranny is not forever, no matter how solid, how repressive it seems. We're, we, we saw a hint of that in Venezuela at the beginning of the year when uh, Guaido uh, almost succeeded in bringing down uh, dictator Maduro. Um, we almost saw that also in Tiananmen Square, also 30 years ago in, uh, back in June, uh, where the people came so close to bringing down uh, the, uh, the communist dictatorship. But it may happen again, as, as, as I said uh, shortly ago, Hong Kong may inspire the Chinese people. And there's more of them than there are party members, Communist Party members, and they know that very well, which is why they slaughtered the Falun Gong, uh, which was a, uh, a very peaceful uh, religious uh, exercise meditation type group. And so uh, it can happen anywhere. Everyone has their God-given human rights to freedom to liberty, to freedom of expression, to protest, to choose their own leaders. We do it. The Chinese people have that same right. So do they, the people in Iran, North Korea, uh, and all the other oppressed places around the world. And I know you actually went to Tiananmen, I mean, after the massacre took place, and you had some reflections on that. I mean, I've read some of your articles on that. What, what did you Thank think you. standing in that square? What was, what was going through your mind? Well, yeah, that was a bizarre experience. Um, I was on a congressional tour, and the congressional tour was run in part by the, the Chinese government. So there was a propaganda That's tour. ironic, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so we asked at one point, because it wasn't on our itinerary, to go to Tiananmen Square, and uh, and they said, oh no, nobody goes there. There's no place to park the bus and so forth. So uh, yeah, a group uh, of us, okay. a group of us went to uh, uh, went there one night, and then one morning I got up at dawn and I walked from our hotel a couple miles and went, and it was bizarre. There were these groups of students being led by a teacher with a bullhorn and a school flag, and they were all being lectured in how wonderful Mao was. They had no clue. They were standing where there was blood, and before the blood, where there were millions of people saying, we want to be free, and uh, the people who built that statue, the goddess of freedom. Uh, and so I'm just walking around, taking in this, and then all of a sudden, it hit me, and I started crying, because I could visually see in my mind the millions of people standing there, erecting the statue of the goddess of liberty, uh, crying for democracy and freedom. And then I could see in my mind's eye tank man standing there holding them at bay for a moment and then the troops rushing in the tanks rushing in people being arrested people being murdered uh by their own government and i cried 
And in fact, on Red State, if you go to redstate.com, uh, you'll see an article by me titled, um, I believe, I Cried at Tiananmen Square. Uh, and I, I was texting at the time with a co-worker back in our office, my thoughts. And so later I put together those texts into an article, and that was on an anniversary of the Tiananmen Massacre several years ago. I wrote that. Uh, but it was a very, very emotional uh, moment, and I just wish the Chinese people knew their own history. Uh, they don't. We, I was talking once to a, uh, a Chinese intern here, safely in the U.S., and we were chatting with her about her own history, Tiananmen Square and so forth. And she was like, oh, no, no, that's a sensitive topic. Even here, they're afraid of the long reach of the Chinese government, which, you know, as you may know, runs Chinese student associations, which are basically Chinese intelligence groups stationed on universities run by the embassy to spy on their own students to make sure that they're not uh, getting, you know, counter-revolutionary thoughts, God forbid, of freedom and, you know, and, and democracy and then the, trying to return uh, home. Chinese Student and Scholar Associations, uh, CSSA is yeah. Exactly, yeah. Uh, so there's so many lessons from the Berlin Wall and my experience, it was just one of the most, most emotional times in my life. You know, another moment there was we had heard there was going to be a huge rally with a hundred, we, we didn't know how many at the time, but huge uh, crowd of East Germans in the uh, city of Leipzig, which is about a hundred miles south of Berlin. And so we, uh, we spent the better part of a day battling East German bureaucracy to get a special visa to go from East Berlin into East Germany proper. And so we drive down there and there's this massive crowd that later was judged to be about 100,000 people and sort of like never before seen. And they're holding signs saying Freiheit, freedom uh, and democracy. And, and, and they, they would take the East German flag, which looked just like the West German flag, same colors and stripes but it had a big uh, communist logo in the center. And so what they did was they cut that out. So you'd see basically what looked like an, a West German flag with a hole in it. And they would carry that as, as one of their banners. And that, that was incredible to see. It, it wasn't without risk. There were East German troops and tanks and water cannon trucks parked in some of the side streets along the, the uh, march route, which went from a church to the Stasi, the secret police headquarters. So I was there marching and the members of my expedition group with, um, you know, 100,000 East Germans all marching in solidarity for freedom. And we marched to the secret police headquarters and there Again, this they would have been shot weeks before for it. They they were having little candlelit vigils for their loved ones who had been killed by the regime or imprisoned. And so there were like some photos and candles and so forth. And th there's a few photos like that on my website, berlin-wall.net. Um, by the way, you can learn more about my space uh, activities at savemannedspace.com savemannedspace.com uh, but the uh, th those were just some of the most emotional and touching moments of my life uh, being there uh, 30 years ago yeah, I have friends in Germany who told me that if you go to East Berlin these days and you ask your average youth a lot of them don't know any of the history of what happened in East Germany I mean it's, it's incredible that they would have gone through all that and you'd have kids these days being grown up and not knowing that history, not taking a lesson from it, and even going so far as supporting that same type of government that they once had. I mean, what, do, what are your thoughts about this situation as we see this new, 
I think, uprising of, you know, people wanting socialism, again, after witnessing all this. That's so tragic. But, you know, it, it, it's happened around the world where, you know, formerly communist countries return. Nicaragua, the, I, I think Ortega is, is still the leader, and he's the one who destroyed their country in the 80s and, and uh, early 90s, and yet they elected him back again. There's lessons from history if you bother to learn them. And yeah, in Germany, they may teach the horrors of Nazism, but they're probably not teaching the horrors of communism uh, or the terrorist elements that are uh, have infiltrated their country through uh, open borders. Um, and so history repeats. And in today's society, well, here in the U.S., they're, they're, uh, can't, they're in school, you learn that socialism is wonderful, capitalism is, is evil, and then you go to university and you learn the same, and then you turn on CNN and it's the same, and then you listen to uh, the Democrat candidates and it's the exact same thing too. Socialism is wonderful. Well, go to those socialist countries. You know, go to Venezuela and spend a week without a gun uh, and uh, see how you fare. Go live in uh, in Cuba. Uh, you know, see the wonders of of socialism in North Vietnam or or China. I'm, I'm sorry, North Korea, uh, Vietnam as well. And uh, but if you don't know it and you only hear the propaganda that it's wonderful then you know that that that's where that country is destroying its future and will end up like east germany again great yeah and art i guess just last question if you could tell anything to today's youth about what you witnessed and this resurgence we're seeing now what would you tell them don't fall for the siren song of socialism the uh, the excuse that, well, it's never really been tried in its perfect sense and that we just need to try it again. Well, when you start taking away people's money and, and uh, then, of course, businesses fail, that's what happened in Venezuela. You can look at that as a contemporary example. Uh, when you uh, demonize wealth and business, then, uh, again, you're destroying the economy Economies are not made by governments. They're made in spite of governments, and and all the regulations only strangle business. Uh, so learn the lessons of history. Um, West Germany was prosperous. East Germany was a rat hole of poverty and tyranny. And uh, the best thing for the uh, Germans today to do is to look at that history uh, prior to 30 years ago and not repeat. You know, that, that's the refrain we hear with the Holocaust, although throughout Germany and Europe, that's being forgotten as anti-Semitism, largely socialist and Islamist uh, based is, uh, is taking hold. And again, people aren't remembering history. They're forgetting those two words, never forget, with tragic uh, possible consequences. So on this anniversary, look at our history. Remember that freedom uh, is, is precious and can be so easily lost. Hmm. All right. Thank you for being on the show. Just one last thing. Where can people find your website again? We can learn more about your work. Thanks so much for having me on uh, Berlin-Wall, Berlin-Wall.net. Uh, and then my uh, more contemporary uh, uh, space activities at savemannedspace.com. Uh, look forward to hearing from you all. And uh, anyone who writes me at one of those, I'll send a link to that article. I cried at Tiananmen Square. So everyone, please remember to like and subscribe. See you next time. Mm -hmm.